Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Um, let's worship today.
present our announcements for this month of December. Christmas, SPA fam! Our men's fellowship is on December 16 from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. here at the sanctuary. This is a potluck event. See you there. Right after is our women's ministry meeting at 10 a.m. with a guest speaker, Sister Valerie Lazarte, here at the sanctuary. We are celebrating December celebrants in our church Christmas party on December 17th. So don't miss that Sunday. See you all. Guess what? Winter camp is back. It is happening on February 16, 17, and 18. Pre-registration is now available on our website at spachurch.churchtrack.com. The first 80 people to register will get a $10 discount. See you there. All this and more can be seen on our website, spachurch.twitchtrack.com. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Hey guys, um, I invite you guys all to stand and then let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you that um, you were able to bring us all here today, Lord. You brought us here for a reason, Lord, that we may worship you and um, lift up our praises and shout your name, Lord. Uh, we invite you in uh, today in this um, day for worship. Um, please take all our anxieties away. Thank you, Lord. Um, may we worship um, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for our family, I speak the holy name.
us on that cross, Lord. Yes. And that you are able to help us with all our anxieties and all our troubles, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's why we find comfort in your name. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, Emmanuel, Lord, God, thank you, God. The power of your name. Thank you, God. May we may we still feel your presence throughout the worship and even through the message, God, yes. that um, Pastor will give us and guide us in your word today, Lord. May we Listen to the name Jesus. Jesus, remind um, us of all the things you've done through us um, with your message, Lord. Um, thank you, God. For your, in your name, too, we lift up the tithes and offering, God. Thank you for blessing us um, with the church, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Come on, let's give another clap offering. Come on, loud, loud and clear. Wow. It's so hard to stop. <laughs> Powerful worship. Thank you, worship team. Your hard work has brought fruit of worship and praise and thanksgiving. It's prepared all of us to, to just be in God's presence, to listen to the word, to listen to what you're about to say to us. Wow. Hallelujah. That song is so powerful. There is really no other name above heaven and earth by which we will be saved. It's this Jesus that brings, breaks any chain. It's the name of Jesus that silence the waves. It's the name of Jesus that brings change. It can change your heart. It changes your view of your circumstance can change the circumstance itself as the Lord wills. If we're going through tough times, when you're going through trouble, when you're going through storms in your life, all the more that you keep whispering the name of Jesus. Keep whispering the name of Jesus. It's the only word that should be coming out of your lips. Father, thank you for sending your son, for showing us how life can be reconciled to you, how your son has communicated with you is the way we will communicate with you, how he has prioritized you, especially in the difficulties of his ministry, in the three years and a half on earth, that's how we should approach our life. To walk close to you, Father, to rely on the Holy Spirit, to allow the Son of God's peace to reign in our hearts. The power of your Son's name truly heals. His name is powerful. His name delivers. His name overcomes and our enemies. It's over our families. It's over the darkness that we live in. It's over every generation, Lord. In your name, we will not fall. Whatever winds, whatever storms, whatever rain falls in our lives, our life is established on the foundation of your name. Thank you for the, all the worship songs that we've sang. It's pointed to you, Jesus. We're reminded in you we have victory. Speak to our hearts now, God. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hallelujah. It's communion. Praise the Lord. Let's just um, open our elements. You know, that, uh, I've noticed, that shofar. Man. He had a second wind, brother. It's, it's, it's like, man, how he is blowing long and hard. It's not anymore that. It's like, whoop, whoop. And he goes, whoo. George. God is building his lungs. My gosh, what a power. That is the welcoming of God. That is declaring that we are victors. It's declaring the holiness of God. It declares the presence of God. It declares that we are in a warfare, in a battlefield, and we are fighting with God. Amen? It, it, it means a lot of stuff. So when you hear that uh, shofar blowing, remind yourself, we are winners, whatever circumstance we are in. We are winners because God, it's God's battle. Especially when we surrender our needs to God, it's God's battle. That shofar, the blowing reminds us, it's God's battle, not mine. Amen. He is with us. Emmanuel, he is with us. Amen. So if you got your uh, elements, make sure it's open. This one, the bread is underneath, all right? Just be careful, though. It might spill. Don't take it yet. We'll take it together. You know, you take this because you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's not just something that you want to eat because you're hungry. No, it's, not, it's never going to make you full. Yes. Don't take it just because everyone is taking it. Be, be true to yourself. No one here will condemn you if you don't take it. Okay, no one should even be judging anyone. It's you and God. If you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior through a sinner's prayer, then this is the action by which we've surrendered our lives to God. Amen? So if Christ is in you, Take this. It's a declaration to everyone that you are now in God. Amen. For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. Okay. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take this bread. This should remember or remind you that we are now one in Christ. We are a family. We eat together. We pray together. We build one another. There should be no in envy or jealousy or anger or indifference in this church. Jesus is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is the head of this church. And we are family that we will be together forever and ever here and eternity. Amen? Amen. Okay. In the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant. In my blood, do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When you take this, it's just a symbol that Jesus, Jesus' blood has washed away your sins. It was never about you doing the Ten Commandments or trying to satisfy God. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that washed away our sins and now we are forgiven. That is the covenant. In Christ's blood, we are redeemed. Let's take this together. Now, personally, thank the Lord. Personally, 
thank him for saving your life. Personally thank him that he is now the Lord of your life and all your circumstances. That he is our savior by which we will enter into eternity forever and ever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, God, for also encouraging us, God, to be the light and assault of the world. That we may bring, Lord God, this truth of the good news into the lives of people, Lord, and share and declare, Lord, that you have died on that cross and that you're, you are the one sitting at the right hand of the Father. Lord, may we be bold. Encourage us to be bold, Holy Spirit. Strengthen us, Lord, to be strong, to be the light and assault, to declare your death and resurrection, Jesus, that only through you, Jesus, we will have life. Only through you will we find our way only through you will we truly find truth. May we declare that as Christians, as your followers, as your people. We are so careful, Lord, so careful to give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God's good all the time. And keep saying that. It's not being hypnotic, trying to hypnotize yourself but it is the truth and when we always speak the truth you'll begin to experience the the truthfulness of it in your life he is good he is good because if you don't always say jesus is good then the devil will say god is bad he is not there for you he cannot hear you the devil will throw everything he can to lie so attack that respond to that wrestle and say devil God is good even if my circumstances are bad God is good and he is like the beacon of hope even when the storms are rough he is my lighthouse he is the light I will go towards that light to find my way in the storms and the waves he is good and his goodness will comfort me in the in my sufferings Amen? Amen. He is good. God is good. Say that. God is good. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Jr. You can stay there if you want. Because I, I really like that guitar right now. Amen. Did you see the whole family of uh, uh, the, the Lasibos here? Their eldest leaning, the father. Sometimes I think he's embarrassed because his microphone is so uh, up to his waist. And he gradually brings. And then the mother playing the keyboard and the cousin. Yeah, cousin is there. My gosh, that's the family. Amen. And one more thing I heard in our fabulous face-off, food face-off. They started at 7 o'clock. They started cooking. They were going to compete with one another, I think. <laughs> they finished around 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. I think Jai Jai, the worship leader, was frustrated with her, her menu that she, uh, what, she threw the ingredients or she cried and wanted to quit. <laughs> but uh, the family and the mother encouraged her. It's, it's no turning back. You just go for it. And guess what? She won. <laughs> it wasn't a taste. It was the Holy Spirit said, no, you're going to win. <laughs> I'm just Even what they write is you're not your name. And when they put it on the ballot box, I'll put your name in there. God, it's powerful. My theme today is the hope of Christmas. The hope of Christmas. You know, while Christmas is associated with joy, celebration, togetherness, being together with family and friends, it can also be very, very challenging. It can be the opposite that leads to hopelessness and the feeling of sadness. Uh, before I go to the main uh, topic, I'd like to talk about several factors that can contribute to the phenomenon 
of why Christmas can be so, so lonely. Could you, could you uh, Sister Beth, could you hear me from there? Because they said my voice is so soft that even if I'm yelling, it's not reaching the back. Okay. Uh, you can't hear me. I said, could you hear me now? Okay. Seven factors that contribute to people being sad uh, during Christmas. <clears throat> and it's there in your notes, but I didn't put the explanation. Loneliness and isolation. You see? People can be so isolated from family, especially those that are, are in deployment. If you're in military, if you're working outside of the country, away from your family, or outside of, you're just working in a different state. It's just that um, being isolated with family can be very lonely. You know, anything you, any feeling that you have before you enter Christmas will be amplified. Majority of the time, it will be amplified. When you think, oh, when I hit Christmas, it's a joyful season. I'm going to start turning into my joy, my, my, uh, my sadness into joy because it's Christmas season. But no. Studies show that if you're lonely or you're depressed in November or throughout the year, it's going to be amplified even more. It's going to worsen when you enter Christmas. That's why many, majority, the depression increases among people who are depressed in Christmas. And the most, I think they, I, I don't know if this is still a, a current um, study, but many suicides, majority of the suicides happen in Christmas. That's how depressing it is. Then the second is financial stress. The pressure to buy gifts, the pressure to decorate your home, the pressure of uh, preparing meals can be very daunting, especially when you have a budget, when you don't have very much financially, but because of the pressure of, of giving gifts and decorating your home, and you, know, you don't want to be the one with, doesn't, there's no Christmas ornaments in your home when people come in, or want to provide meal it's just this financial stress is there because your budget is limited the third reason why people get depressed or sad is expectations versus reality sometimes people f have these unrealistic expectations okay expecting that when Christmas comes it will be peaceful it will be perfect it will be great People will have a peaceful mindset. Everyone jolly here, there, you know, expectations is, but the reality is it's not going to change. All you hear is uh, new songs, the Christmas songs, and people giving gifts, more people in the malls, but it doesn't really change anything if your heart is entering Christmas depressed or fearful or with wrong expectations. The fourth is grief and loss. Loss of a loved one. Christmas really enhances the absence of that person you have lost. I'm talking to someone here who's lost her loved one. May this message speak to you. May it comfort you. God can fill the void and the pain of the absence of your loved one. He is the Prince of Peace. Amen? Amen? You know that person, if you know that person after this service, hug her. Amen? Okay. Fifth seasonal affective disorder. Look at this. Before it was just called the Christmas blues. But now they put a disorder into it. Seasonal affective disorder. Oh no, now because it's a disorder, you're going to have to take drugs now. Yeah, you're going to have to take psychotic drugs because it's a disorder. That Christmas blues, you 
you gotta go to the office now, to the to, to your doctor, because uh, nah, to deal with the Christmas blues, you gotta take some drugs. People experience this depression, hopelessness, and sadness, known as SAD. Even the name, SAD, social affective disorder, SAD. And it usually happens in winter months or in holidays. Okay. Holiday seasons. Winter months, cold winter months. Okay. Six is this social comparison. People compare their lives with those that they see in TV, in Hollywood. They compare their lives with what social media shows. They're always comparing, oh, Mr. Jones, they're just so happy people. It, it, the, the comparison increases even more. The distinction increases even more. It becomes even more uh, just illuminated during Christmas. You start comparing people. They have a big, good meal. I'm barely making it. Barely having three meals a day. And these people, they, every Sunday, they have a meal with family. And the seventh is this, stress and overcommitment. The holiday season becomes overwhelming because of, you know, social obligations, parties that you got to go to, a long to-do list. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to shop now. I got to buy this. I got all this, this, this. It, come, it becomes overwhelming, especially when you're already dealing with the other factors. Stress. So are you in this category? You don't have to raise your hand. Probably majority, no, in Jesus' name. Okay. So as we draw near to the season, or we are in the season of Christmas, we need to, need to be filled with anticipation of the joy that we find in Christ. The theme of our sermon is this, the hope of Christmas. The hope of Christmas. The seven factors shows the hopelessness of Christmas, but we need to change our mindset that there is hope. Christmas is not merely a holiday, but a celebration of this hope that has entered the world 2,000 years ago. And who is this person? Jesus Christ. It's a celebration of this hope that entered the world. It was born place in the manger 2,000 years ago. Our hope is not found in our increased promotion or more food on the table or that we are able to fulfill all to the to-do list. No, no. Our hope is in one person alone, Jesus Christ. Isaiah 40, 31. It's not there. Okay. But read it in your apps, your Bible. Isaiah, Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 40, 31. It says, this, it says here, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will what? Soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow faint or weary. They will walk and not be faint. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 4, especially chapter 4, it begins, if you look at the very first sentence of chapter, uh, chapter 40, I mean, of Isaiah, chapter 40. It says, comfort, comfort my people. Comfort, comfort my people. It proclaims that the Lord is coming to deliver the people from slavery and bring them back to their homeland. Comfort, comfort my people. Is God the deliverer will take them back into their homeland. The chapter is filled with the message of hope, assurance, and promise that God will deliver, that he will restore. So when you go to Isaiah 40, verse 31, okay, we find this powerful promise that God will renew our strength 
when we put our hope in God. God will renew our strength when we put our hope in God. Amen? Christmas embodies this hope that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Because with Jesus Christ coming, there is now hope for the world. There is now salvation. There is now joy. And there is this renewed purpose of your life here on earth. Without Christ, you will not really know your purpose in life. You may have already attained the highest echelon of your career. But if without Christ, you will still find like there's something wrong. I, have, I am not yet at peace. There is something empty. Even if you're the president of your company, even if you've started your business and became successful, even if you have your riches without Christ, you will not feel that you have attained, that there's still something empty. I have not reached. You have not reached your purpose. Only Christ. And if Christ brought you there, you will be satisfied. If God took you out of that success and brought you to become a missionary, because that was his purpose from the very beginning, you will find peace in the, in the boondocks rather than being uh, sitting in the high office of a company. You know about Gary Lynn? You, you know, you remember Brother Gary Lynn? Very successful person. Been the captain of the base one time, captain in the Navy. He's been in the Pentagon. He's shared the budget to some generals. When he left and retired, he became the finance uh, officer of a big. Um, um, it's a yeah, it's of a charity. Yes, non. There you go. Nonprofit organization. He was the uh, financial officer. Okay. One time he asked me, "Can you, Pastor? Can you? Can we have dinner?" And he was right. He was in the sixty-six. I, I hope he's not watching this. Uh, I think it was sixty-six or sixty-seven. But. Brother Len, your life illustration is going to touch so many. So he has already reached the top of his career, successful. Even when he retired, he was still being used of the Lord. But uh, he said, when we had dinner, he said, Pastor, can I, can I open up to you? I said, yeah, what's up? Said, Pastor, you think of me as successful, right? Yes. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. But even when I have already reached the epitome of my career, even as a retired, uh, as a retiree, I've never really found any joy. I've always had to prove myself in the, in the, in the Navy. And because I've done so well in the Navy, I've, I've become successful in this Nonprofit organization. But until that time, when I truly, I was a Christian pastor, but until that time that I've surrendered my life completely to God, did I find true joy, true joy in my life. I've been a Christian for so long, but there's just something there that I was not able to surrender to the Lord. And this thing that I, wanted, I could not surrender until just recently was when my dad was a perfectionist. And he demanded so much from me that it became my goal to please him. That no matter how much I did well, it was never ever... It, it seems like I, I don't feel the satisfaction that he was pleased with me. Until he died, it continued. I strive to be the best, but still hoping that if my dad was alive, he would be happy with me. And I don't know if he was happy, even after all this success. But when I truly surrendered this to God just recently, 
And the Lord said, Son, it is me that you please, not your father. And to please me is so simple. Love me, surrender your life to me, and I will fill you with the peace that you thought you could get from your dad, from your father. You please me and only me, and you will be successful. And how did I do that, Pastor? I just live one day at a time, loving and obeying the Lord. And my gosh, that filled my life so much. I'm ready to let go of everything now because I'm pleasing the one that really counts, my Father. Amen? Amen. So you please God, not your, not your spouse, not your boss, not your family, not your father or mother, but God. Amen. And it's easy to please God. Amen. So today I want to delve into why the hope of Christmas is so significant and explore how it will impact our lives if we change our mindset and live out this hope of Christmas okay and we know that Jesus was not born in December because it would be too cold in Israel we know that he may have been uh, born in the summer uh, I mean just January alone in Israel February I mean it's this the, 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 the shepherds are not in the field during those months it's just too cold so I just want to let you know but the spirit, the meaning of Christmas, of Jesus coming to, coming, uh, to earth, is what we want to focus on. Amen. Not exactly on when was he born, but why was he born? Okay. So the first was this: the promise of Emmanuel. The significance of Christmas can be seen in this, the promise of Emmanuel, first outline. Christmas reminds us of the promise of God's presence. Christmas reminds us, especially if some of you here are just completely so distracted because of all the factors I've shared to you. Go back and erase all that and look at the promise of Christmas. Emmanuel, Matthew 1, verse 23 says this. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. It should be there in your, um, on the PowerPoint. Okay. It's not there. Okay. I think my wife was asleep when he wrote that. Too. No, she wrote that. Okay. The virgin, well, let me read it to you. The virgin will conceive a give and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Okay? The birth of Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of a promise that goes back all the way to the Old Testament. Isaiah 7:14. Is that there, Monica? Okay, it's not there either. Okay, there you go. Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. See that? All the way from Isaiah, there's already a prophecy. And now in Matthew 1, 23, Matthew reiterates this, Emmanuel. The birth of Jesus in Bethlehem was not just a random thing that happened. No, it was perfectly planned by God to fulfill the promise he has given. Just as God has fulfilled this promise of bringing in his son, he continues to remain faithful to all of his other promises that he has given to us. The promise that he will care for us, that he will be there for us, that he hears our cry, that he will heal us. All of those promises is there for us to hold on to. May the promised fulfillment of Jesus coming 
remind us, Lord, you have made promises, and I'm going to hold on to this, particularly this Christmas season. And what a great promise you have given me, Lord, that you are with me. God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen? Amen. This God with us signified his presence in a way that it will deal with the challenges that we face, deal with the uncertainties, deal with the moments of despair, deal with every hopelessness, everything that you're going through. Know that his presence is there. Know that his presence is there. Because of his presence, no wind nor storm will break you down. Because of his presence, like the song says, that he will overwhelm your pain. He will overwhelm what you're going through. That he is our healer. He is our life. He is our truth. His presence is there. You have to just meditate. Lord, your presence is with me. Your presence is upon my circumstance. Your presence is upon my bank account. Your presence is there with me, Lord God. Let that presence revolve and just penetrate through what you're going through in life. Don't just think of it in a, in a, in a, in a, in a thoughtful way. Oh, your presence is there. No, let, it, let the truth permeate. Lord, your presence is with me as I go through this storm, as I go through this death valley, as I go through this, Lord. Your presence is with me. You know, Max Locato says this. Okay. It's not there either, huh? So now you're, you're focused on me now. Right. <laughs> I don't know why, but so there's a reason why the Lord says, nah, you're going to be focused on me now. Because I, I was going to, okay. Max Locato said this, you can be sure of this. Quote, you can be sure of this. He is with you when you close the door behind you and when you lie down at night. He is with you when you put your keys in the ignition, he is with you in the courtroom, on the airplane, at the hospital, in the nursing home, and in the graveside. Yeah. Close quote. Remember a story of this person, this lady in the plane. And there was this turbulence so scary that they started to drop. And everyone was yelling, and, 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 the, and, the, and the oxygen mask started to fall, and everyone was yelling. And then she just cried out, Lord Jesus, you have calmed the storm many years ago. Calm the storm now, oh God, in Jesus' name. Calm the storm in Jesus' name. And then... He was just led to turn on his camera and take a picture of the outside, the storm and the wind. He just took a picture, but then continued to pray. In about 10 minutes, it started to subside. And the turbulence was gone. And from that moment on, they reached their destination so calm. So calm. After that prayer, you might want to use that prayer anytime you want to, especially in an airplane. Okay. Well, she was led, so you know what? Why was I led to take a picture? And so, um, and this was an old uh, testimony because it had, it, it, it still had, um, I'm sorry, it was a camera that she used because now she got the film and got it um, uh, developed. The following day, when she came in, the developer, the one who developed it, said, can I ask you a question? I said, what is it? Where did you take this picture? I said, I was in a plane, and I took a picture outside at the window. <coughs> and the guy was just shocked. He said, here's the picture. And there in that picture was the shadow of Jesus, white, standing on that plane, on the, on the, on the, 
on the wing. There was a shadow, a white shadow of Jesus like this, standing on the plane uh, wing. And that shocked her. Jesus heard her cry. Jesus came and calmed the storm, the turbulence. Amen? So he is with you, my gosh. He is with you. His presence is with, with, is with you. Call upon Jesus. Don't call on the name of your, your wife or husband. or anything. Just call on Jesus. Amen? His presence. Where his presence is, there is his power. There is his love. There is his comfort. There is his healing. There is his provisions. And how he will answer is his prerogative. It's his sovereignty. He will deliver it in the way he thinks is best. You just call on the name of God. God knows your needs. And he will answer in his way so that there will be more glory pointed to him. Amen? Amen. And not you. Number, letter B, salvation and redemption. See, the hope of Christmas is that Christmas reminds us of the promise Emmanuel, but also it reminds us of our salvation and redemption. That Christmas represents the fulfillment of God's plan. Okay? And this plan is what? Redemption, salvation. Luke 2, verse 10 to 11 says this. Luke 2, verse 10 to 11. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Bring I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Close quote. See, the significance of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem goes beyond historical events. But it reflects that, uh, that, that the salvation offered to the world. That we are no, we can, we don't have to be slaves to the sin that we have pretty much surrendered to. We tried so much to avoid alcohol or to avoid lust, to avoid gambling, to avoid being angry, to avoid uh, being hated or bitter, or or to avoid not thinking of the bad past that that that, that haunts you. You try so hard, but you can't. Until the point that you say, Lord, you know what? This is me. This is who I am. I'm just going to accept the fact that I'm a bitter person because of my past. I'm just going to accept the fact that I cannot overcome lust. You know, it's just me. I cannot overcome this anymore. But when Jesus Christ comes, He will set you free. He will set you free. He will set you free from any bondage, every sin, every sin in your life. Amen? God, there is no reason to still hold on to this identity lifestyle. I belong to the ghetto. I live like a ghetto. I, live, I, I was trained this way. I will die with this belief. I was so hurt, I will hurt people now. It's just who I am. You know, the message they... It proclaimed the message that these, these, these angels proclaimed was not about the absence of conflict, but that there is now the presence of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. That He, the Prince of Peace, has arrived. That He will bring peace in your heart in the midst of conflict, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of situations. Behold, the Prince of Peace is now here with you. Amen. Because then you will be so attractive when that peace is so illuminated in the midst of your trouble. People are watching you. Man, he is being, he, he, the, uh, the umbrella of suffering is upon his shoulder. But why is there peace in his life? It's not anymore, ooh, all the peace is gone, all the, the circumstances is gone. No, no. There is greater, greater testimony. When you can walk in peace, when, G when you can walk above the water like Jesus Christ, when you can walk above the water like Peter. I 
Not often will God calm your storm, but very often He will walk with you through the storm. In the world, the unbelievers will see that. Especially those that have surrendered to their life of pain. Jesus' peace. Jesus' peace starts off by knowing that you have been forgiven. It's, it, it, it continues. The, the peace of God begins, you begin to experience the peace of God when you realize that your sin is forgiven. That now you have, this, you have been reconciled to the Father. That now you are saved. And that you will have this eternal life with God. Those truths will bring so much peace in your life. It's not the peace we're in. Oh, not that I have peace because I could overcome the storm. No. Yes, it's, it's, it's there. But the first and foremost taste of your peace is the peace that your sin is forgiven. That you are now reconciled with. You can call G God Father. And you can feel it. The Holy Spirit will let you know in your spirit that you are calling God as your Father. You are now feeling the salvation in your life. And now you have this blessed assurance that you have no fear of death because you are going to heaven. That truth will bring you so much peace rather than the peace that everything will be calm. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That is the truth that, really, that no unbeliever can ever experience. And when you hold on to that truth, and then you have this peace not to go through any storm in your life. But if you miss this truth and you say, oh, where is now the comfort and the rest and tranquility, God, as I go through the storm. Man, son, look at me first. Enjoy the peace that you are now my son and I am your father. Enjoy the peace that your eyes are now in eternity, not in the temporal thing. Enjoy the truth that is now revealed in you. Because everything else will trickle and follow with this truth. Can I hear an amen? amen. Yes. No, I think I'm okay. I'll survive this one. Yes. You know what? I got some water here. I got some water here. Yes. Yes, I got some water. Yes. You know, Jesus' miss, mission included not just freedom from eternal damnation, <clears throat> but now it includes freedom from bondage of sin and the consequences of your sin. There's so much more now that happens to you. Hopefully, you're reminded of this every day when you have devotion. You're reminded of this every Sunday when you come to church. You're reminded of this in Easter. But let it be a reminder to you, particularly in Christmas when the world is suffering. When all you see is good in social media, but in reality, the majority of the people are suffering. I think and if, if there is an increase of suicide on Christmas rather than on Easter, then you better really see the hope of Christmas because this is where you really need to be the light and a salt in this Christmas season because this is where people are hurting and they're pretending that it's okay. Hoping that if they walk down the mall and hear the Christmas lights and see the neon lights and hear the sing songs of praise that they'll be okay, but when they go back to their car going home, they're in pain. Nothing has changed. You're that person to give hope. The hope they need is Christ, not gifts and toys. It's the truth that God will set them free. Amen? Amen. Lastly, this peace and joy. The hope of Christmas brings peace and overflowing joy. Look at Luke 2, verse 14. Glory 
to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. You know, when the angels appeared, you know, I think I said something that's wrong here, though. This message I just gave was peace and joy. I jumped a whole outline. But you didn't notice that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, I'm not. B was salvation and redemption. It reminds us of the salvation. The hope of Christmas is to remind us that we are saved, that we are redeemed. All right? But then again, letter C is that it reminds us that we have peace and joy. And like I said, like that when the angels announce peace to all men to whom his favor rests. His, God's favor rests on those who receive Christ as Lord and Savior. God's favor rests on those who welcomes his son into their lives. And when you welcome Jesus into your life, for sure, you have welcomed the Prince of Peace in your life. Amen. It's God. It's Jesus. Jesus it's, it's not say, hey, here's the peace. Now, if you don't, if you disown me, disc- you backslide, that's okay. Because even if I'm aware of your heart, I gave you peace. No, no, no. It's He is the peace. If I am with you, you have peace. You take me out of your life, you have no peace. I am the peace. I am the way. I am the truth. I, it's me. You need me. I bring it with me. You take me out, I take that way, truth, life, peace, joy, hope, out. Amen. I don't just toss it there, put it in your life, and if, if I'm gone, you can continue to enjoy that peace. No, no, no. No, no. I am the peace. I am the way truth and the life amen Amen. okay the hope of Christmas is a radiant beacon to the world and who brings that beacon of hope us that hope is Jesus when we bring that Jesus the hope Jesus into the lives of people it really radiates the life of people. They may look bad, they may, they may ridicule you, they may persecute you, they may ignore you, but you know what, it's not done. All you did was throw that seed. The Holy Spirit is what they will have to deal with. It's the Holy Spirit that will continue to, to steer the truth you have just said to them. You may have leave hurt because they seemingly ignored what you just said but move on and pray for them it's the holy spirit's responsibility to convict and convince that person of righteousness of judgment he will have to deal with now the truth that was put there by you and the holy spirit now will have to increase that truth in his life later on three months five years from now he'll say you know what after you said that, I could not sleep. After you said that, I went, through, I went through some tough times and I was reminded of what you said. After you said that, I began to feel this little glimpse of hope. I was prideful not to receive it I, because I just didn't understand. But somehow what you said changed something in my life. So don't ever think that what you said is useless. Okay? You say... Do you have peace? Yeah, I have peace. No. Do you have true peace? Yeah, I have peace. I got the work. I got the job. I got, no, no. The Bible says the Prince of Peace is Jesus. Do you have him? Because without him, you're just experiencing the worldly peace that is so temporary, it will come out. It will will leave you quickly. You need to have the Prince of Peace that will be with you until into eternity. Do you want that peace? And if he says, yeah, I want that peace, then surrender your life to Christ. Amen? Amen. That's simple. May the hope of Christmas fill our hearts and renew the strength, especially for those who are enduring pain right now with grief and fear of Christmas. 
Focus your eyes on Jesus, not on the worldly definition and description of Christmas. On Jesus, let us embrace the promise of the Emmanuel, that God is with us. Let Christmas remind us that, that God fulfilled this promise to send the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us. Let us, re, let us, be, remember, let us re, be reminded that we are saved and free from every bondage of the enemy, every sin. And let's remember this, that the hope of Christmas is this eternal joy and a peace that God has given us. Through Him, we will overcome, and our light will shine. Amen? Amen. God's good? Amen. Now, you feel discouraged? Go back and watch this in Facebook. In YouTube. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Father, thank you so much for reminding us, Lord God, that your name, the son you get, the name you gave to your son Jesus, is powerful. It gives us life and truth and health. It gives us provisions. May we truly focus on you, the hope of Christmas, so that, Lord, we can bring this truth, this view, into the lives of so many in our family, to our relatives and friends, to our workers, who may think that their situation and their life will change this Christmas season. But it only amplifies it. May we be so ready to say, yes, Lord, when you lead us to that person tomorrow or this week. To be bold by depending on you, Holy Spirit, not on our strength, for we will always fail and follow our feelings. But to say, Lord, if you're leading me, strengthen me now as I obey you. And surely, Lord, we will experience your boldness as we speak love and truth to people's lives. We thank you for reminding us of this truth this Christmas season. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, for those who may not know Christ as Lord and Savior, who may know only him as a historical figure, but not a personal friend, someone who can truly drastically change the way you live and how you live. Follow this prayer after me, a prayer of surrender to God and allowing him to be the Lord of your life. Please repeat this prayer after me with all sincerity. Dear Father, forgive me of all my sins. I am sorry. Dear Jesus, I believe you died on that cross for me. Come into my life now as my Lord and Savior. And Holy Spirit, mold me to be like you. Equip me to serve you. And into your hands, I lay my cares and my situation. Thank you, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, I want you to stand up because I want you to lay hands on any part of your body. We believe in the gift of healing, the gift of faith, the gift of miracles are working today. And if there is someone you know that is going through pain in the body, be that, represent that person and lay your hand upon your body that represents the pain that your friend or co-worker is going through. 
stand in the gap, stand in behalf of that person. And when I pray for healing, you mention that person's name as you lay hands on your body where it would be pain on that person's body. Hallelujah. Go ahead now, lay your hands upon your body if you're sick. Father, in Jesus' name, you know everyone here who is sick. You know what disease they're going through right now or what illness, Lord God, or what pain in their body. If their hearts are failing, their kidneys are failing, Lord God, their eyes are failing, their bones are weak, Lord. Or, Lord God, their blood is contaminated with something that's not of you. I speak to that illness right now. Spirit of illness, leave in Jesus' name. In Jesus' most precious name. Body be healed. Organs be healed. Blood be purified by the blood of Christ. Restore healing, Lord God. New hearts, new kidneys and livers, new muscles, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. By your stripes, they are healed. Mention the names of those who are sick that you're representing. Father, you know who they are. Like that of the centurion, you know, Lord God, those that we are praying for. Father, in Jesus' name, we declare healing for them as well. We declare salvation in their lives. We declare that they will experience you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Even right now, Lord, relieve them of the pain they're going through right, right now, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they will acknowledge you, Lord God. You will humble those people who are sick that are not here, Lord. And they will declare you, Lord God. They will acknowledge you. Not the doctors, but they will acknowledge you, oh God, the healer. Healer, Lord, and you will, Lord, declare that you care for them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for their healing. Thank you for the healing of everyone here right now. Hallelujah. And I pray for those who are depressed. I pray for those, Lord God, who is uh, going through restlessness, Lord, and fear and grief, Lord God, and anxiety, Lord God. In Jesus' name, rebuke that in Jesus' name. Fill them now, Lord God, with your blessed assurance that your presence is there. Lord God, fill them with, Lord, may the fruit of His Holy, fruit of His Spirit, Lord, flow in their lives. Exchange that problem, Lord God, with peace and presence, Lord. With promises, Lord, may they stand on your word. Stand on your word. Increase their faith, Lord God, and their hope in you, Lord. Hallelujah. For you are their deliverer. You will answer their needs and their provisions, Lord, in your way and in your time. We thank you, Lord, for the victory. We thank you for the healing of everyone. And we thank you for the good, good report of anyone who went through some tests, Lord, this week. Hallelujah. Or going through a test, Lord, we are thanking you that you will give them a good report. There will be negative. Hallelujah. Results on those tests. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, let the Lord, joy of the Lord be upon you all. May you walk close to the Father. May you experience His presence as you whisper His name every day. Be bold and be strong, for the Lord is with you. And everyone says, Amen, Amen, amen and Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, if I can get your, uh, your attention for just a short bit. Um, it, I'm going to try to make it quick. Um, but uh, if you know me, um, that could take about 30 minutes. Um, real quick, uh, some of the things that we missed on our announcements, uh, just because things are fluid right now. Um, today, if you had been a participant for the fabulous food face-off, um, come see Raina over at the admin table. She's going to... Um, get some information from you as, as far as like shirt sizes and everything. So this, if you're a participant, please approach Raina and the admin table. Um, number two, we have our men's and women's fellowship coming up. It's on the 16th. And uh, we get a treat this, this time because we're going to have special guest speakers for both uh, events. So I'm going to keep it a secret, but their last name uh, rhymes with Lazarte. Um, <coughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, if you can, uh, make some time. The men's fellowship starts at 7, ends at 9.30. The women's fellowship starts at 10 and ends whenever. <laughs> uh, so please uh, uh, save that date, save that time. Uh, the Christmas outreach. Uh, if you didn't know, our church participate or 
not participates, organizes a uh, San Diego Christmas outreach. And what that is, is we're trying to support or give a gift to uh, a, a, a needy family in, in, on, around Christmas. And that's going to be on the 17th. Uh, the idea here is that we invite uh, the people that we're, we're trying to bless, invite them to church so that they, they wouldn't know that we're giving them a gift. You're just inviting them and, and, and say that, hey, we're, we, we, our church is doing something. We're going to provide lunch that day. Um, so if anything, that's, uh, that should be an incentive for most people is like, hey, come join me for church and now we're, we're going to treat you to our, for lunch. Uh, but we're also going to give them a gift. So if you have a family in mind, please, please, please contact Sister Anne. And if you don't know uh, Sister Anne's um, contact information, come see us in the admin table and we'll give that to you. Um, or Brother June, it says. They're pointing at each other. So t- uh, pick one. Uh, there is a criteria, so I, 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 I must mention this, there is a criteria that they, they would meet. So if you nominate someone, uh, we, we will go through that process. I'd love to go uh, down the line of like what the criteria is, but it's not gonna take, it's not gonna take two minutes. It's, it's, it's a little bit more involved because we wanna make sure it's the best possible candidate. Like we, if we had, if we had, a, uh, if money was no issue or if, or if, or if, or if, or if, or if our, a big mega church, it wouldn't be an issue, but we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're effectively giving uh, the right way. Amen? Yes, exactly. We got to pray about it. We can't just like nominate someone. We got to pray about it, you know, as, as, as individuals, as a church. Amen? Um, sorry, my phone keeps locking. Uh, now it doesn't recognize my face. Come on, iPhone. Uh, Christmas outreach, Christmas caroling. This is something new. It's like right, right off the press. As I was standing over there, like, hey, come over here. We're gonna, we're gonna announce this right now. It's either going to be December 10th, or December 20th, or December 21st. UCSD uh, Hospital is inviting us to sing carols at the lobby. So, um, if you're interested, uh, please approach Brother June. There we go. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take some uh, names and volunteers who who would be available at that time. Times and everything isn't set yet. Is that correct? It it would be a one time one day thing, one time thing. With with, with the most uh, people. Amen. Thursday, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So it. Oh, okay. UCSD Hillcrest. So more details on that as we as it develops. Uh, we'll we'll announce it again. You know what? Anytime you have a question, come approach the ad- admin table, and we'll find out what the information is for you. Uh, Brother June, did you want to add something? They'd wait on us, and then we get to minister. They, they ask questions, and next thing you know, there are people like praying and laying hands on people on wheelchairs, praying for the for the patients and so forth. So it's an opportunity an opportunity to minister and uh, share share the good news, share about Jesus, the reason for the season. Amen. All right, brother June, coming up with taglines on the spot. Um, no, that is true. It's it, it's it's not not so much about you singing it's about people being blessed if, if that makes sense um so again more information on that as it develops as it comes uh, uh, uh as as we get them we'll we'll send it out to you one last thing uh, one day one last day to remember that's uh <laughs> even i forgot uh it would be yes winter camps coming up signups will start on the third 
So the actual registration, what, what you've been doing is pre-registering. That's just to give us an idea of how many people are interested. And guess what? We passed the, okay, we should go because we have enough people. We have close to 50. So in order for us to really go, we actually need 80. But judging from other pa winter past, no, winter camp past, uh, we're going to easily exceed that now. Remember, it's in February, so, uh, and a lot of people, uh, we've already crossed the threshold of like, okay, we're going to go forward with this. We are, we are past that and more at this point, so we're going we're gonna, to, there's still a lot more information that we need to iron out, and as, as it comes again, we're going we're gonna to pass it out. Faith in motion is our, our theme, so let that kind of like start stirring your heart. You know, what, what, what do you want to uh, say to me, Lord, about this faith and uh, being in motion. So, yeah, uh, remember that, and we're going to announce more of that as, as it comes. And uh, the last date that I want you guys to remember is January 5th. What's January 5th? It's the first Friday of the year 2024, and we'd love for you to come join us and worship here at the sanctuary that Friday. Amen. So we had, we had one last, last Friday. It was great. Um, uh, but, you know, really, it's not about the feeling great. It's about the worshiping of God. And what better way to spend this coming new year than to worship God on a Friday with the rest of the church. Amen. Amen. And like what Brother June said, it's, it's about reaching out. This, uh, this caroling and this, this, uh, the San Diego Christmas outreach, it's more about us reaching out to people. We love our events here, but a lot of times our events are just for us. And this is an opportunity to go out and actually minister to other people. So I would love for you guys to volunteer for that, right? So God bless you. That's it for this Sunday. Let's go be the church out there. Let's go. And if you need any prayer, uh, the altar is open if you want to come up uh, and be prayed for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.